The gospel for this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, is taken from St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by the words of the angel and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for who, for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you, each and every one, in the name of Jesus Christ. After reading the text today and also hearing the psalm, the Magnificat from Mary, um, just in my mind wondered what this was like for Mary. And I imagined somebody interviewing Mary to ask her about some of the things and how she reacted and how she responded and how, what that might tell us about what the good news is for us. So I imagine the interviewers asking, what were your ponderings, Mary? And Mary responding, well, the angels, I had heard about angels, but never seen one, never expected to see one. So I was perplexed. I was, I was taken back, shocked, scared. I was really perplexed that the angel had come to me to say, that I was favored and I was blessed and I was the one selected, me, in this little town of Nazareth. And even that, of all the ones to choose from in Nazareth, they chose me. I'm nothing special, nothing particular about me that, that God should choose me. It was more than I could imagine, uh, let alone experience religiously, it was amazing. And overall, I was shocked. I was surprised, even a little suspicious. Well, did the angel's explanation help? Well, it wasn't easy. It was very uncomfortable what the angel had to say. Surprising when an angel says, do not be afraid, and yet, Actually, I did relax and feel more at ease. I had a sense of peace, a kind of a serenity that happened when the angels said that. But when the angel said I was going to have a baby, I was confused beyond belief. My marriage had been arranged um, and, and not even begun just announced, you might say. And the angel said that the child will be great. Well, of course, I, you know, every parent 
hopes and dreams that their child will be great will be something but the son of the Most High and will reign as king of Israel? I thought I was really of no account, and I wondered how then could my child be of anything, of this level, this esteem, this um, this uh, height, and that I was given a name to give to the child, Jesus. It wasn't a name that I preferred, but when the angel said it, I knew it was right. Of course, if this is the way it's going to be, if this is what it's going to is what going to is what's going to happen, I'm not going to have a child, and they're going to be the son of the living God, Jesus. Yes, it seemed just right. And all because of the Holy Spirit, the angel said, that Jesus would be holy, that I would give birth, that Jesus would be the Son of God. It's a little terrifying thinking of that. It seems like a big responsibility or a big role. Uh, it was terrifying. And yet, I was calm. That peace and that serenity was still there. So the interviewer might say, did you have any doubts or reservations? Oh, Mary would say, it was all new to me. But our scriptures, they're full of this and stories of amazing things that God could do and did do. Things that people thought were impossible or never dreamt of and God did them. The angel told me about Elizabeth. My cousin, she was much, much older, beyond childbearing years, really, and she had never been able to have a child before. And the angel told me she was six months pregnant. I was so happy for her. I was so amazed. I remembered stories about other women in our scripture who were old and barren and promised a child and then had one beyond belief, beyond the realm of possibility. And then the angel said something that really clicked for me. Oh, the interviewer would say, what is that? He said, nothing will be impossible with God. That's exactly what Sarah heard, Abraham and Sarah heard. God announces to them and Sarah laughed, right? Because she thought, that's ridiculous. That can't happen. I'm 90 years old. I've never had a child. I don't expect that it's possible even anymore. But is anything too wonderful for the Lord? <laughs> and I thought of the connection between Sarah and Elizabeth and others. So the interviewer says, so were you fully convinced at this point? Well, Mary says, I trusted and I hoped it was true. I knew it was going to be tough, tougher if this whole announcement was a falsehood or just made up. Oh, that would have been worse than it coming true. I was felt kind of stuck. And yet I trusted and I hoped and somehow believed that, yes, God could do what, what we think is impossible, not real. But yes, I was committed, just like others who were chosen and called by God. I found myself replying, here I am, Lord, let it be according to your word. Uh, that surrender that I felt as well. Confident to surrender myself into God's hands and what God has prepared. I really understood and sensed what it was like to be called and chosen. Still had a hard time believing you know, thinking of all those great heroes of the scripture, Moses and Samuel and Isaiah, now here I am, Lord. 
send me. Here I am, Lord, your servant. Let it be according to your word. It was, it was awfully exciting for a little girl in, from Nazareth to think this was going to happen to me. So who did you tell, the interviewer asked. Oh, I didn't tell anybody in Nazareth. I didn't tell Joseph. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell any of the girlfriends or moms. In fact, that's why I went to Elizabeth, because I knew that she would understand. She, the one who was barren and couldn't have children and now was pregnant because of God's action. She would understand. She would give me assurance that, that things are going to be okay, that I wasn't crazy, and she wouldn't make fun of me or question me or doubt me. And it would give me time to let things sink in. So was it a good choice then to go see Elizabeth? Oh, yes. Yes, I've got, I got the confirmation that I needed, the assurance, comfort. Uh, I had a connection, somebody who understood, who there was a bond between us now. God, we knew, was doing a new thing. said to us, blessed are you to receive all this. That's what Elizabeth said. And that's what Jesus did on behalf of people in the world. God's favor is upon us, each and every one. In Jesus Christ, God is new, doing a new thing. In Jesus Christ, who has chosen you, and is being born to you, a new thing is done. God's favor is upon you all, each and every one, realized in you, fulfilled in you. Though you may consider it impossible, all things are possible with God. If you think it's impossible for God to forgive you your sins for what you have done, Think again, my friends. All things are possible in God's love for you, making all things new, making you new. It's a wonderful thing to think about that we are not unlike Mary. We don't think anything special could happen to us or for us or that God would come to us or be with us or do such a thing for us. And yet God comes to us and says, I will be born in you and born to the world through you. You? Me? We're nothing special except for what God has done for us and is doing through us. It's so special, so amazing, so profound, so hopeful, so life-giving. And it is forever and ever and ever. That gift for you. So let's sing like Mary. Let's sing that the, let our soul proclaim the greatness of God who is able to do that which for us is impossible, that we might claim God's love and live in that now and forever. Amen.